My name is Calvin Dwick. I'm uh, born in Mexico, and the state is Chihuahua, Chihuahua, Mexico. I'm 30 years old, and uh, we do farming. I farm with two of my brothers together. We're three. I do more of the apple orchard side. My brothers do cattle and uh, corn, what we do it, uh, together. As they would say, it, I'm from the Mennonite. But, uh, we originate from Prussia first, and then Russia, and then Canada, and then to Mexico. And that's where we've stayed. Most people know us for, for the agriculture side here. That's what most of us do. I'm sure in the northern state of Chihuahua, it has made a big impact. There's lots of cotton, corn, dairy cattle, there's quite a bit. And also for apple orchards, there's quite a bit of it around here. But I think it has made a big difference here for the economy to get started and has there's opportunity to work on it, sell, sell the grains and interaction. It has produced a lot of a lot of jobs. Chihuahua State in northern Mexico, a vast expanse of arid desert where granite ridgeback mountains rise out of the mesquite-covered plains. Despite being the largest state in Mexico, this region is one of the country's most sparsely populated due to its inhospitable terrain. It is here, north of the city of Cuauhtémoc, that a community of Mennonites settled one century ago. Patricia Islas has studied the community in depth. When they came here, there was nothing to do here, because they came to a place that was inhospitable tierras no, muy poco cultivadas. Ellos demostraron que, que podían cambiar la forma de eh, la agricultura. An ethnic group founded through the European Protestant Reformation in the 15th century, Mennonites have migrated across the globe in the 500 years since their displacement from Central Europe. Their economies are based primarily on agriculture. Ashley Lovan is a Mennonite historian. The Mennonites didn't live always in the same country. And agriculture is something that you can do in the whole world. So they just needed to adapt a little bit to the climate change or things like that, but it's really helpful for them. In 1922, they found a home in post-revolutionary Mexico. El Presidente Obregón sabía muy bien. Peter Rempel is a community leader in Cuauhtémoc de que se pudiera terminar la revolución tan sangrienta en México era en buena parte por la promesa que hizo el gobierno de quitar tierras a los latifundistas y repartirlo entre los campesinos. Pero él sabía que con eso no se iba a arreglar todo el asunto de que hubiera luego, luego muy buena producción. Esta región fue una de las regiones más devastadas por la, por la revolución. Si llegaban... Eh, agricultores más tecnológicos y la región podría recuperarse. But getting started in this inhospitable region wasn't easy. Pudiera haber sido un fracaso. Si no fuera porque en los años del 35 al 45, digamos, la tractorización del campo y entonces un tractor pequeño que consumía muy poco combustible podía hacer más trabajo que 8 o 10 caballos, caballos percherones empezaron a evolucionar sus métodos eh, agrotecnológicos. Ellos empiezan a traer maquinaria agrícola para acá, de, de Estados Unidos y Canadá, de tal manera que, bueno, en la actualidad tienen eh, maquinaria agrícola muy sofisticada que ningún mexicano, vamos a decir, lo tiene. If not 100%, 99% of the equipment comes from the U.S. here that we buy there and we we take it here. Today, the Mennonite community numbers more than 100,000. Bueno, los Mennonitas son una sociedad endogámica, eh, cerrada hacia la comunidad desde el principio, hacia la comunidad dominante. Traditional Mennonites are a society apart from the countries and broader cultures they inhabit living in their own communities, rarely mixing with outsiders, and speaking their own language, Low German, a Teutonic dialect preserved from the 15th century. The agricultural advances they have brought to Mexico have coincided with a detachment from the country's wider society. This has been the case throughout their 500-year history, in the 87 countries across six continents where they have settled. 
Mennonite schools have been key to preserving their culture. Sonia Bohorkes is the director at the Álvaro Obregón School, which, in allowing non-Mennonite students to attend, remains in a minority among the community's educational institutions. Juega un papel primordial y saber de dónde venimos, ¿no? En las escuelas si enseñamos historia menonita y, y, y por qué se han, han mudado de lugar, porque quieren el espacio para tener la libertad de practicar su fe, trabajar, ¿no? Porque pues eh, la cultura de, de los menonitas es de mucho trabajo. Mennonite children generally leave formal education at the age of 16, almost always to work within the community. Las familias menonitas generan empleo entre ellos mismos. Tienen mucho trabajo. Entonces es muy difícil que un joven menonita necesite salir a buscar trabajo. Los niños para los 13 años saben muchas cosas. Saben de mecánica, saben de, de hogar, saben de economía, saben de la tierra. Saben del cuidado de los animales. O sea, la, la instrucción informal en el hogar es muy fuerte. Despite their insular nature, the Mennonites have transformed this desert region into a highly productive economy. Cuauhtémoc, que es una de las ciudades más importantes económicamente hablando, eh, la región de Cuauhtémoc que es, es próspera y eso en gran medida se lo debemos a los Mennonites. Today, Mennonite lands in Chihuahua State are some of the most economically productive in all of Mexico. Stretching north from Cuauhtémoc, the mosaic of land parcels covers the flat plains around their main artery, State Highway 5, the longest agro-commercial corridor in Latin America. Flanking this 20-kilometer-long commercial hub are the orchards of this region's speciality, apples. Entonces, hoy en día, casi todos los que construyen bodega de refrigeración de una vez hacen, hacen frigoríficos de atmósfera controlada. Eso quiere decir están, están sacando el 98% del oxígeno de las alas una vez que están en, en cero grados y así lo mantienen controlado y la, la, la fruta no madura hasta que dos meses o tres meses o cuatro meses después cuando se abre la sala entonces se empieza a comercializar lo de esta sala y nosotros tenemos cuatro, ocho salas de refrigeración con este de atmósfera controlada y estar en el mercado más bien todo el año. In a traditional apple farming operation, the requirement for a large labor force would only be at harvest time when machines cannot do the work of picking the fruit. However, these ingenious solutions have created permanent jobs in Mennonite packing facilities which supply fresh fruit all year round. Tenemos una, una empresa aquí en, 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 en la región de los gra más grandes productores de manzanas que tienen suficiente para mandar como unos 15 trailers de manzana todos los días, todo el año. This is the case across Mennonite activities in agriculture, where their approach to cotton, corn, dairy and the grain industries is the economic backbone of Chihuahua State's $3 billion agricultural sector. Cuando los menonitas llegan, se genera esa dinámica de atracción hacia el lugar. Son miles de empleos los que se generan eh, por los menonitas hacia la comunidad mestiza. It's an economic boom that Mennonites say is the result of their work ethic. Tony Giesbrecht, at just 21 years old, is the supervisor at this facility. Crecemos de, de que empezar a trabajar desde joven, en especial mi papá creció en una familia muy pobre, entonces él sí empezó a trabajar desde los ocho años. Pues sí que se ve el espíritu de que, de que quieren avanzar, quieren, quieren trabajar. There is a phrase we all Mennonites know, that means that all the job makes your life happier or sweet, that the job, the agriculture would always make your life easier. Maybe it's hard in the day, but it's something good. El proceso que yo les platico, siempre había gentes que no tenían capital ni para una cosa ni para la otra, entonces tenían que ser um, innovadores. Pues yo diría que, que muchos mexicanos han aprendido en ese aspecto mucho de los menonitas. I guess you can see it with time, what unity does, and it's a bar, big part of survival, especially in hard times. 
Despite their success over the last 100 years, the Mennonite community in Mexico faces 21st century problems. Climate change in this arid region is hitting hard. Pedro Harms is a dairy farmer here. Si nos ha castigado como el año antepasado, nos ha caído granizo, granizos fuertes, que nos castigó con tanta sequía, pues. Such efficient exploitation of these lands for over a century has resulted in increasingly difficult farming conditions. Yet few here believe that humanity's growing presence on the planet is linked to the changing climate. La mayoría de los melonitas no creen todavía realmente que el hombre está interviniendo de mal manera para cambiar el clima. The climate change, I've heard it. I don't, I personally, I don't think it has affected us in a big, big side or big thing. Some claim the cows do, do harm. I personally, I, do, I don't think so. I don't think there's a say that we have to make drastic changes, this or the other one, because we can't continue that way. That's a concern for the next generation. Se, se ve que cambia el clima, pero ellos no reconocen que es por, por decir, porque quemamos mucho, que ensuciamos o eso, ellos más bien piensan que es normal. The burning of Mennonite fields is an annual event. By setting fire to their land following harvest, the ashes fertilize the soil for the following planting season. But the carbon footprint the community leaves is enormous. As conditions become more difficult in the desert, many choose to bury their heads in the sand. No creen que el hombre tenga la culpa, que, que quema demasiado monte o que estamos bombeando demasiada agua y que se pueda acabar, que los días pueden ser contados para todos, inclusive para los, manza, los manzaneros. Pero así como es tanta agricultura, sacan tanta agua, pues de mi punto de vista yo sí veo que sí son, deberían de ser más cuidadosos en eso. The water supply that has fed this region's agriculture for a century comes from the subterranean aquifer, but it's running low. When the Mennonites first arrived in Cuauhtémoc in 1922, they found water at seven meters below the ground. Today, the average well is drilled more than 500 meters into the earth. It is an issue. Without water, the apple trees that I farm would not be able to survive. We want to take care and use as little water as possible. That's why we set up irrigation. Instead of flood irrigate, we try to set up sprinklers or, or drippers. That way it helps us to preserve the water. We want to try to use it wisely. But it's not that we say like within five, ten years now, I think we're, we're done with it. Many Mennonites are already beginning to leave. In 2016, more than 100 families left for Colombia following a dispute over the drilling of wells with neighboring Mexican farmers. As the community faces mounting challenges with a water supply they have depleted through their intensive farming methods, another large migration for this insular group may be on the horizon. It's a preocupation because if the water is over, it's practically over many things. I would say a big migration, a lot of people would go to look for other options, other places where there would be more water. I've heard a lot of families talking about moving again. Mennonites are always moving. For the Mennonite community, leaving the place they have inhabited for a century would not be as traumatic as for other displaced people. Los Mennonitas eh, no tienen una identidad eh, cultural o una identidad nacional como mexicanos. Ellos mismos dicen que son ciudadanos del mundo, ¿no? Entonces nunca crean una parte de su cosmovisión es no crear raíces de, de patrióticas en los países en donde han estado, en su diáspora. Tú no tienes por qué engancharte nada más con la, con, con la ciudadanía mexicana. ¿no? With a working colony now up and running thanks to the pilot group who left in 2016, Mexico's loss may soon be Colombia's gain. Sería difícil. Pero si no hay opciones, pues sería, sería lo único, sería mover. Como somos muy acostumbrados a estar en comunidad y todo, pero también pues, parte es tradición y todo. Entonces, pues sí, se iría un buen grupo, se iría muchos juntos. No es que se, se fueran a diferentes partes, todavía quedarían sí, pues, juntos, por decir. I think it's uh, a lot of that is from the community, just sticking together, especially in hard times. If, uh... They move somewhere, you have to stick together. If you don't stick together, you're not going to make it.